Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to say thank you for joining me today. Today we'll be going over this week's hip mobility routine. Now, my previous hip mobility routine had a lot of positions where you're on your knees. And so a lot of you requested that we modify this routine so that you don't have to put a lot of pressure on the knees. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. A lot of the positions we're going to do, we're going to make sure that uh, you're on your knees as low as possible or in knee flexion as low as possible so that you're more comfortable when you're doing this uh, full body routine. The target area for this routine is mostly for your spine and the muscles and joints connected to it as well as your shoulders and hips. Okay, so first we're going to start with your cervical rotations. So from here, you're just going to take a seat, hands lightly placed on your knees, and you're going to bend your neck down as far as possible. From here, you're going to rotate the neck and try to create the largest circle possible, but still within your comfortable range. We're going to do anywhere between three to five rotations in both directions. We're going to start from the top today and then we're going to go downwards through the spine to the hips. And then go in the other direction. So as you're doing this, you should feel areas of limitation or tightness if you have any tight muscles in the neck. Pay attention to where your limitations are. Try to focus on those areas as you rotate through the neck. We're gonna go for one more here. And perfect. This next exercise, we're gonna go through the shoulders, back, and neck. We're gonna start with your hands behind your head, and you're going to simultaneously bring your elbows together, bow the upper back, and tilt your head downwards. You're gonna feel the stretch behind the neck and into the upper back. Try to keep the low back as straight as possible so you can isolate this movement to the upper part of your spine. After about five seconds, you're going to come back, go into a light chin tuck, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and bring those elbows back. Make sure you're not hyperextending through the spine. If you don't want to see any rib flaring like that, try to keep your ribs low. Just isolate this to the upper back. And let's repeat three to five repetitions. Back down. Flex everything downward. Try to spread your shoulder blades as far as you can during this movement. You want to feel that stretch in your rhomboids as you pull the shoulder blades forward. Now you want to feel your rhomboids contract as you retract your shoulder blades back. Okay, let's go for one more here. Pull it all down. Pull it all down. And then come back. If you feel like you particularly responded well, go for a few more reps, pause the video, do those reps, and then you can press play when you're ready to move on. One more down. Okay, the next exercise we're going to be doing is for your scapulothoracic joint. This is the joint between your shoulder blade and your thoracic spine. For this, let's go into this hands up kind of zombie position. You're going to try to keep your arms as parallel to the ground as possible. You're going to shrug your shoulders up. You're going to try to pull your shoulders as far forward as you can, creating this circular motion. You're going to pull them downwards, then back, then back up again. Try to create the biggest motion possible while still maintaining parallel arms to the floor. The reason why we're doing this is to uncouple any motion from the glenohumeral or your actual shoulder joint from your scapular, the, uh, or scapular thoracic joint. Try to separate the two movements. Give you ownership and control. Let's go in the other direction. We're going to go downwards now. Forward, forward and up. Up and back. Straight back. Back and down. And we're going to go for two more repetitions here. Once again, if you find that you're responding particularly well to this exercise, feel free to pause the video right now, do a few more repetitions. You can do as many as you need to do to get the desired effect. From here, we're going to go into an upper half log roll exercise. You're going to keep, go into kind of a starfish position, heels planted, and legs wide apart. 
at least shoulder distance, if not wider. We'll lie down on your back here. We're we'll stretch your one arm out, so we're kind of in a starfish pose. You're gonna take your right hand, you're gonna stretch over, keep your heels planted on the floor, try to touch your other hand, even reach further if you want. Your head at this point can be on the floor or you can raise it up as I am. You should feel the muscles of your back stretch out. Come back down, we're going to do three to five repetitions. Repeat. As you're reaching forward, try to make sure that you are still breathing. You don't want to be holding your breath or straining with this, right? This is all about how much effortless control you have and about working it out. Back down, let's go back up. Reach forward, reach forward, try to go as far as you can. You should find that as your body opens up, you can reach a little bit further each time. Let's repeat for the other side. Right hand out this time, left hand reaching forward, stretching out. You should feel this in your obliques, you can feel it in your lats, your QL, sometimes even your hip muscles. It really depends on where your current limitations are. Reach forward, keep your heels planted. Take a few deep breaths. We'll do one more here. Reaching forward, let's go again. And then back down. From here, we're going to go into a uh, pretzel exercise. So for this exercise, you're going to raise one knee up. You're going to take the opposite arm and pull it all the way down to the ground. From here, you're going to bend the other knee as much as you can. Grab it with your ankle and pull that to the floor. You want to keep both shoulders on the ground as much as possible while also trying to get the, both knees to contact the floor. You'll feel this in your lower back, upper back, hips, shoulders, wherever you are tightest, wherever your limitations are, is where you're going to feel it. Take a few deep breaths. We're going to hold this for up to 30 seconds. Pay attention to the muscles that are tight and actively think about letting go of the tension in those areas. Deep breath in there. And then breathe out. And then breathe out. Okay, you're going to now reverse the motion. So to walk you through it, you're going to raise now your right knee up. Grab it with the opposite hand, pull that down to the ground. From here, bend the other foot, grab that foot, and then pull that to the ground and try to get your shoulders to touch the ground as much as possible. And make sure you take easy, nice deep breaths here. Find your second repetition has opened up compared to your, your first. But once again, if you find that you're responding pretty well to this exercise, you can pause the video and do a few more repetitions. Generally, I like to go for three to five repetitions. For today, we'll do two. Now holding for 30 seconds is not a strict rule. You can hold it for less if you find that that's doing the trick. Pull it down, grab the other foot, pull that down, and twist. Now, if you do have knee tension on that bottom leg where you're grabbing the foot, you can alternatively just not grab the foot and 
let your knee be at a looser angle, kind of like that, and then just anchor your hand to the floor. You will feel less tension going through that leg's hip flexion and quadriceps if those muscles are tight. However, it's just best to do whatever you feel comfortable doing. All right, coming back up. All right, now we're going to transition into the world's greatest stretch. So from here, this is the one exercise where you have to be on your knees. You're going to bring one leg forward, lunge forward. If you do have knee tension on that bat, on a knee, just roll up a towel and then place it under to act as a pad. From here, you're going to place your hand, the opposite hand, to the front leg. You're going to reach upwards with your free arm. And feel the stretch in the hip flexor of your back leg, the trail leg. The glutes of your front leg, your obliques and shoulder muscles as well. Come back down, we're going to switch sides. Back up. Your foot's replacing your hand essentially on that front leg. Rotating up. Feel the stretch in that hip flexor. Feel the stretch in your glutes and hamstrings of the front leg. It goes without saying that all of these exercises are best done on a yoga mat or a big gym mat like mine. These gym mats can be found on uh, Amazon. They're just called gym mats. They're very comfortable when it comes to doing different types of mobility work. The one caveat is that because they're more cushiony, It'll be harder to hold yoga positions on this, so I do not recommend it as a replacement for a yoga mat, but an alternative for your mobility exercises. Stretch your glutes. Good. Last repetition here. Lastly, we're just going to finish with the supine glute stretch. You're going to lie down on your back, put one ankle onto the opposite knee. You're going to get your arms and either grab the back of your knee or the front, feeding your arm through the loop your legs create. Pull that towards your chest. Use your elbow of the arm that's looped that's going through the loop of your legs, push it against your thigh or knee. What this will do is increase the stretch of that bent of that uh, leg. So this stretch actually targets not the leg you're grabbing, but the one with the foot that's on the knee. Let's switch sides. Arm through, grabbing behind or in front of the knee, and pull. Just yet, so you have an idea, grabbing the front of the knee will look like this. Technically, because it has a further anchor point, you will be getting into a deeper stretch. Use that elbow to once again push that knee out as I am right now to deepen the stretch. And switch. So we'll be doing about three to five repetitions. Today we'll do three together. If you want to do more, Pause the video and do more. And stretch. Pay attention to what your back is doing with this. We're not trying to curl the low back like that. We want to keep that back as flat and as close to neutral as we can. It will flex a bit just due to the nature of how much hip flexion we're putting our body into. So your back will not be in complete neutral. However, we do want this exercise to stretch out the hip. We're not really trying to stretch out the low back here. So keep that low back as relaxed as you can while you do the stretch. And switch. For 
those who have a hard time getting into deep knee flexion, that's where the option where you grab behind the knee comes in. This leg could be in any knee position. It doesn't really affect the stretch. So if you want your knee to be higher up, feel free to do so, or your foot to be higher up, I should say, as that will not really impact the stretch that's going on here. And we'll rest there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mobility routine. Uh, if you have any questions or any modifications that you would like to request, please let me know in the comments below. Please uh, like and subscribe the, uh, to my channel if you enjoy the content. Um, looking forward to seeing you in my future videos.